Welcome to Women of Courage, Season 2, where my guests continue to share their courageous stories. It's my hope that these stories will encourage and inspire you as you face your own challenges, that you will take action to courageously pursue your own dreams and passions, no matter what obstacles are presented along the way. I'm Ann Miner, your host for the show, and my guests are Women of Courage, women from all walks of life, and whether their challenges involve their health, their family, their business, or their career, it's apparent that every aspect of their life was impacted. Our Women of Courage have found the strength and the courage to confront, to overcome, and to succeed in spite of everything. Stay with us, we'll be back in just a moment with today's Women of Courage. to Women of Courage. I have with me today Lee Pryke. Welcome. Thank you, Anne. Lee, I know that you face significant challenges in your life and I'm really interested in hearing you tell our audience about them. So why don't you begin at the beginning? Well, thank you for having me here, Anne. I look back over the last few years and what comes to mind this evening to discuss is a time where I had issues with my heart. And leading up to that briefly, what had happened is I thought I was on this great ride of life. I ran an organization for women over 50 menopausal, mm -hmm. 15,000 of them across Canada. And uh, it, 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 what happened is the organization was very similar to another. And I was gifted with papers where they were suing me. So I, three months into my business, I was, I had this lawsuit on my hands. 18 months of fighting, the good news is, I won. However, that took a big toll on my health and really sort of zapped the joy out of me. Along with that, my father and my husband passed away within a two week period. So I was really oh, on quite a roller goodness. coaster ride not paying attention to myself as much as I should have. Although I started seeing symptoms happen and went to the doctor, said, I said to him, I'm gaining all this weight and I, it's not from eating, so it's something else is going on. No one was really listening to what was happening with me. And so I just expanded and expanded and began, I began to retreat into my own life and into my own home fearing that it was something I was doing, mm. which was sad. Mm -hmm. So a year of that went on until finally, I knew instinctively that if I didn't get up and go to the hospital the next day, I probably wouldn't have a chance to do that. And I did, and that's where they discovered that I had right-sided heart failure, and I was drowning from the inside out. Oh my goodness. So all of the stress of dealing with the lawsuit and the loss of my two men in my life uh, accumulating with me not really listening well enough or being in fear of what was happening to me and not hearing the sounds of my own illness really kind of brought me down. Several months after I was in recovery, I was in hospital for over a month, and I lived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there was a definite purpose for me on this earth. And I left the hospital on a recluse for about a year. During that time, I discovered on Oprah a show and a series called The Secret. And that's really what started to turn me around because I was very sad. I didn't know how I was going to get over this. I found out, you know, I was being misdiagnosed for, for quite a long time. Um, but the fact that I did live and that I was able to carry on meant that I had to do some changing in my life and I had to start listening to what was really, you know, take a proactive approach to my own life. I started to study the secret that I saw on the Oprah show and delved into it and realized that this was the beginning of the steps to help me remember that I did have a purpose and a cause and there was a reason that I survived my heart failure. So you know, some of our, our viewers may not know what the secret is. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? 
The Secret uh, came out uh, several years ago, and basically what it is is a study of the laws of the universe or the law of attraction. So what you believe, what you put out there, you get back. So if you're positive and you're happy, that you generate more of that. So it's really living your true, authentic self and 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 being joyful and happy with what you have, appreciative and grateful for everything in life. So, you know, it's like taking what, what me looking at why the heart failure was there, what was the lesson in this for me. The interesting thing is when I learned to really step back and be grateful that I was living mm -hmm. through this secret and the law of attraction, you know, many things started opening up. It was an interview with the Heart and Stroke Foundation that really helped me understand why I was in the, the whole scenario in the first place. And when they asked me a question about my heart failure, it was like this huge aha moment that I realized that all of my life, and I do get emotional when I say this every time, mm -hmm. I had gone through most of my life with a broken heart, with this huge hole in my heart, looking for love and not being able to find it, blaming my parents for so many years. Now I have to say, I realize it wasn't their fault. They mm -hmm. did the best they could do. So yes, I, I realized with this interview with the Heart and Stroke Foundation that all my life I had gone on with this hole in my heart, this feeling of emptiness, this looking for love. And I broke down in the interview and realized that because of this and not paying attention to it and not understanding it, I had manifested a physical mm. breakdown of my heart. My heart just stopped. It was sad, it was broken, and now it was time to repair it. So that is why I went on the quest of looking for ways in which I could heal my heart and it really started with understanding myself more, uh, appreciating who I was and what I had to give to the world, and loving who I was exactly as I am in this moment. Mm -hmm. And that began the journey that I'm on now, and really what's helped me get through the bumps along the way, because it hasn't been a smooth ride, Every December, my body remembers that I almost died at that time of the year, and it seems to do this rebellion where I, you know, and I, it goes back into different phases. Uh, even this past December, I had a reoccurrence, which now I can look at as just a little reminder, a little nudge from the universe mm -hmm. to say, okay, what aren't you paying attention to right now? And as much as I had come so far in my journey of better health and wellness, I still really wasn't listening to my heart's desires and my purpose and my life vision and giving to others but forgetting to give to myself. Mm -hmm. So this year has been, again, um, a huge opening for me to, to really love who I am what I am and what I have to offer. And who helped you along the way, keeping yourself grounded and focused? I have a very good support system in my family with my daughter, who loves me unconditionally, mm -hmm. who has given me the most amazing grandson. <laughs> my yes. parents are no longer here in the, on the physical plane. However, through their passing, I have been able to learn so much more that of how they did care more than I thought they had. So I believe that they were there and still are there supporting me on this journey. It's a never ending journey. You know, it's an everyday process of getting better. This it, recovery doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm very grateful. I have some wonderful friends, two of my best friends were with me for three weeks prior to my, when I ended up in the hospital with heart failure, mm -hmm. watching me go downhill, holding my hand, trying to find excuses to get me to the hospital, knowing how sick I was and knowing how much I was in denial. And I thank them to this day for being strong enough to stick with me and my stubbornness and mm -hmm. getting me to the place where I needed to be in order to heal. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about your journey, and I want to hear about that grandson. 
Stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment with more of Lee's story. here with Lee Pryke and we're going to talk a little bit more about that wonderful grandson of yours. You know, I am so grateful that I survived with my heart condition and blessed so much to have been gifted with this child who shows me how important it is to have fun and to play, to let that little girl inside come out mm -hmm. and be joyful about everything. And you know, Anne, children, I mean, if we could all be children for just a day, especially five-year-olds, where everything is an experience and glorious. So, you know, he brings his artwork home from school. I snap it up and I frame it and I put it all over my walls. And all the time I look at it, it reminds me of him keeps him in my presence and his creativity and also for me to play a little more, have more fun and joy in my life. And through him, I actually decided to take a journaling, art journal course and start to paint and color. Mm -hmm. And then the two of you have collaborated on a book. Yes, we have. Through the art course that I took, um, I had a little journal, and in that journal I played with pens and, and paints and different mediums to try and see what I felt good doing. And he would come down for the weekend and I would say to him, look at what Nana's doing. Mm -hmm. And he would get all excited and we'd sit together and paint on canvas. You know, he'd make me the funniest looking little elephants and <laughs> everything was perfect. So through that, you know, I started getting up in the morning and saying, you know, what if, what if I, you know, felt this way or that way? And part of it was my own healing process. Um, what if just for today, I took my pens and papers and started painting, what would I paint about? Which kind of led into what you mentioned is my book. And in my book, it's a journal, interactive journal, that I hope when readers take it in their hands that they can also play with paint and crayon and bring their creativity out as, long, as well as learning from the message that is in the book, which is really that it all starts with you, with ourselves, and loving ourselves enough to play, to be joyful, to be grateful. Some of the questions in the book are such things like, what would it feel like if today you just stopped and breathed? How would that look? How would that feel? Mm -hmm. And then I would have a picture, I would draw a picture about breathing, and that's in the book. Then I took pictures from my grandson mm -hmm. from the time he was three and on, and I incorporated that into my book too. If it brought me that much joy, then putting it on the pages of the book would hopefully bring that much more joy to someone else. So yeah, at five years old, he's kind of co-author of a book. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. So where, tell us where you're at now and where you're off to. For many years, I talked about writing a book, mm -hmm. and I never really put it down on pages, and now I've done that with the inspiration and guidance of great friends and my grandson. This is one in a series that I plan on writing. The series is called Happy in a Handbag. <laughs> Everything yes. that I do now is from the heart to others' hearts, showing and helping people to love themselves a little more, to be joyful and playful a little more, and just really be happy. So we're moving forward from this point, I will be writing more of these books, and I'm also working on a program and workshops in order to teach this message. And my passion is to get out to young girls in school. How many times I see them walk by my house to high school with their heads down, buried in books or s cell phones that their hair covered over their face and you know they don't have anyone to tell them how delicious and and succulent and gorgeous they are exactly as they are so i think it's important that since i've been given this opportunity to continue that i maybe can work with these young girls in schools and colleges and make their road a, l a little less bumpy a little less speed bumps than mine was mm -hmm. So if you had one message that you wanted to give our viewers today, what would it be? Very simple. When you get up in the morning, be grateful 
Say thank you. Notice the small things around you and love yourself a little bit more. And if that's hard, take some beautiful red lipstick and write on the mirror, <laughs> I love you. And they will be able to see that every day. So is that the sort of thing that you talk about in your workshop? Do you, you know, have your girls that you're teaching? And is this mostly women that you're it targeting? It is mostly right? women that I'm targeting, yes. So. Although I did have a young boy of 14 come up to where at a book signing and want my book because he also wants to write. Mm -hmm. And he's having issues at school with people accepting him. So he kind of opened my eyes that this may be, there may be more audience than I thought of and, and so I close no doors might just have to figure out something other than red lipstick then. red lipstick yeah on the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> but primarily yes my message is for young women and women of any age mm hmm so do you see yourself speaking as well as running the workshops absolutely the word has to get out there and I have a story to be told and if I can en enrich someone else's life my business my primary business is called I Am I Can Self-Enrichment. So it's all about doing things that make your life better because it does start with you. And when you feel better about who you are, personally and professionally, everything else falls into place. So yes, as a speaker, that's my message. And I will be moving forward in that direction. Great. So can you share with us some of the titles of the books in your series? The next one's about slaying the procrastination monster. <laughs> well, I need that. <laughs> yes. I have recently wrote, uh, co-authored a book called Sharing, which will be released actually December 7th, with 24 other women who have gone through trials and tribulations in their life, and we've all shared a chapter. So that's actually gone to press and ready oh, to great. come out. Yes. And then, but uh, back to my series, the next one will be Slaying the Procrastination Monster. And my grandson and I have already started drawing these little monsters with frizzy little hair that are just incredibly beautiful. <laughs> Yes. I have been asked to write a book on forgiveness, and that's mm -hmm. very important because I didn't forgive myself, and that's where it starts before you can forgive anyone else. So there'll be a story in there as well about that. And I'm not sure where I'll go. I'll just wait and see how I'm guided as the path unravels. And do you have a timeline for, for the procrastination book? I'm actually writing it now. I'm hoping to have it out by the beginning of the year. All right. Well, that will be great. Yes. That will be great. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that book come out and to the one on forgiveness. Thank you. Certainly that is something that we can all work on. You know, we all have our trials and tribulations and days when things aren't so great. And I think that we are hardest on ourselves than anyone else. And so really, that's where it starts. Certainly that has been my own experience. So I know that you're not alone in having to forgive yourself and lighten up a little bit and have some more fun. And I really appreciate you being with us today, Lee, Thank and bringing you. your message forward. And now a few words of wisdom from a wonderful, wacky, one-of-a-kind woman, Jezebel Peppa, a woman of courage in her own right, who will share with us her thoughts on the themes of today's episode. Jezebel Peppa here. You know, I can remember back to when I was a baby, or can I? But I'll tell you something. When I was a baby, I was never more authentic than I am then. I try to be that way now, but think about it. As a baby, when you are hungry, you cry, somebody feeds you. When you don't feel good, you cry, somebody loves you. Then we start to get reprogrammed. Well, I'm here to tell you, stop being reprogrammed you'll find that you've started to live your life for somebody else. You might be somebody's wife. You might be somebody's mother. And I'm sure there's some little part of your life where you're not really being you. We want you to come out from behind that. Be who you are. I'm going to challenge you. Take a step forward. Find one little spot in your life where you're not really being all that you can be and try and change that. People may not like it at first, but they'll get used to you. So celebrate the fact that you can be who you really want to be. And remember to celebrate the Jezebel in you.
Thank you, Jezebel, and thank you, Lee Prike. You have certainly inspired us today, and I, for one, am motivated to move forward on the next steps of my own journey. As our thank you gift, you'll receive a copy of my book, Succeeding in Spite of Everything, and you'll take home our beautiful centerpiece from Floral Occasions in Ingersoll. Now, we would love to hear from our audience. Last season, many of you wrote to our guests directly to let them know how you had been inspired and encouraged by their stories. We would love to be able to share your comments and feedback on future episodes of Women of Courage. So please contact me directly by email at the address below on your screen. Remember, in every setback lies opportunity opportunity for you to call up all that you have learned through other people's stories and what you've learned through your own personal experience, to rely on your core beliefs and values, to rally your strength and your courage, to find your way through, to overcome, and to succeed in spite of everything. Until next time, be courageous. step would I take today if I were If I were brave, I'd walk the razor's end Where fools and dreamers dare to tread And never lose faith Even when losing my way What step would I take today If I were Bye.